Hey everybody, it's Wendy with Crooked House Herbals and I am live once again to talk to you today about heavy metal detoxing for our Earth Suit number 5 series. Can everybody hear me okay? Let me know if you can. I had somebody tell me last week that I was a little bit soft, so I'm going to try to speak louder. So, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started. My name is Wendy Fargo. I um, am the founder and owner of Crooked House Herbals, and I am a master herbalist and an educator. And I am here to talk to you tonight about things that can make our earth suit happier and healthier and stronger and live longer and have a better quality of life. So thanks for joining me and I am going to take off. I see Mandy. Hello. I can't wait to show you the picture that we have tonight for the kids. It's amazing. I love it. It's my favorite yet. So anyway, let's talk about this. Uh, heavy metals. What are heavy metals? Heavy metal poisoning is the accumulation of various types of heavy metals in your body. Most of them will come from either environmental <clears throat> exposure and food. You'll get a lot of heavy metal poisoning from food at times. Um, chemtrails in the sky. Fertilizers like refrigerants, if you happen to be in the refrigeration business or working around a lot of that kind of stuff. Cleaning solutions. Um, many, many things that you don't even realize have, um, expose you to heavy metals. And like I have said before, hey guys, um, your skin is your biggest organ and you absorb 80% more through your skin. So when you are working with cleaning solutions or you're um, working with uh, even like welders or people that do a lot of soldering or anything like that, you are exposing yourself to some pretty serious heavy metals. I know one time, one time when I was um, directing a musical here in Hot Springs um, called Ansylvania and my kids and I were building sets and we had taken up this whole parking lot building these massive sets and we worked on it for days and days and weeks and weeks and weeks and um, never really f gave it any thought until I started feeling really crummy I mean not good at all and so I went to my um, osteopath and he asked me a bunch of questions and then he said so what have you been doing lately and I told him you know, and I, I was actually really excited about it because we were just like pioneering new ideas and we had to make these gigantic sets to make the actors and the uh, actresses look like little tiny ants and ladybugs and things. So it was a challenge and it was exciting, but he just kind of shook his head and said, oh, okay, okay. How long have you been doing this? And I told him and he said, oh, well we have our answer. He said, I'll take some, I'll run some blood work just to make sure. Hi Haley. Um, but I'm pretty sure that you have got some chemical poisoning. So he ran some blood work and he checked my liver and sure enough, I was, had just like poisoned myself with not only all the stuff we were working with, but all of the things I cleaned myself with afterwards and it was just absorbing into my skin and eventually over a period of weeks made me very sick. So I'm kind of a little bit of a first-hand experience with this particular thing and I'm, I think that once we talk about this a little bit all of you will probably go, hmm, I wonder if that's what was going on with me. So you have to be really aware of um, you know what you're doing in your life and make sure that whenever possible you protect your skin from absorbing um, heavy metals or chemicals it's not always possible but that's we're going to talk about the alternative there too and what you can do about that so um, 
again, like I said, you can get heavy metal poisoning actually from foods that you eat as well. So there's the environmental aspect and then there's food that you eat. We're going to talk about both of those. Um, some of the common heavy metals that we talk about would be zinc, copper, iron, mercury, lead. Um, and then there are also some that, uh, you know, you're more familiar with arsenic and those kinds of things that are in, I mean, we, there's arsenic in your water. So it just depends on um, how much of that particular water you drink or uh, how good your liver is functioning, whether or not it can filter things the right way. Um, there's several factors, but you have to be aware that if you're compounding your intake of heavy metals, at some point it's going to build up to a point where you will become toxic. So, <clears throat> there in your paperwork, in your documents that I uploaded this time, there's like 14 pages of different kinds of information. We're not going over all of that tonight, but I just gave you, a, I mean it's like a really intensive list of different kinds of metals, just in case there's people out there that actually work with a lot of different metals and you might want to just check this list and make sure that you know if this is stuff that you're working with you need to take precautions or you need to counterbalance it with the detoxing methods that we're going to talk about um, you know they always talk about how wonderful titanium is well and all what about all the mercury in your teeth you know that kind of stuff that's you know some of us have had I mean I only have like four fillings in my teeth and I got them when I was 16 years old. I've never gotten any others, but they're 16 years old. I've never had them taken out. So that's a big one. And I know a lot of people have um, had their mercury fillings taken out and, and either replaced with other things or whatever, but I've just never done it. Like I said, I only had four total and, and I just never messed with it. But I kind of, I was always hoping that maybe one of them might fall out sometime and I could just, have something else put in but my dentist just did a really good job but I so far have I do re, I do detox regularly and so I feel like I can offset it to a point so anyway okay so we've we've established the fact that you're gonna be exposed to heavy metals pretty much anywhere or in any many situations hi Pam hey Barb um, the chemtrails in the sky are a big one. That stuff just falls down on us. And it also lands on all of our plants that we're growing and things that we consume. So sometimes it's a double whammy. You know, we're, we're getting it on our skin, but we're also getting it in our food and things that we ingest. So, be aware of that. Um, not all metals are have a toxic level. Um, some of them are pretty benign. Others, like lead and mercury, um, are ones that you don't even want a little bit, really. I mean, lead, you know, we grew up with hearing about lead poisoning and, and those kinds of things, and it's a real deal. So you stay away from those, if at all possible. You know, we also have other issues, like uh, x-rays and different types of things that we undergo if some of you may go to the doctor frequently and you may have had several different kinds of tests and every time you do that you're exposed to different types of maybe not a metal but it'll be a radiation or it'll be a chemical and so our bodies just eventually go okay enough I can't do anymore you gotta fix me so on that note um, Let's talk a little bit about heavy metal poisoning per se. It's, it is just the accumulation of toxic amounts in your soft tissues in your body. So um, your symptoms are going to vary. It varies a lot depending on um, the metal and it also depends on the condition of your soft tissues and your ability for your body to purge and, and flush things. If you have kind of a wimpy liver, then you may um, you may get toxic faster 
than someone who has a clean liver. Um, zinc, copper, chromium, iron, manganese, all of those are essential minerals too, so it's like there's a fine line. You, that's why last week when we talked about zinc, I said, you know, it doesn't take a lot of zinc. More is not better in that case. You just want, I, I posted for you the recommended um, dosages for women, men, children, your ages, and you don't want to um, exceed that. You just want to stay within those limits or even a little under if you, you know, are being careful. Or if you eat a lot of foods that are high in those minerals, then don't take a supplement. Just let, let the natural um, <clears throat> amounts meet your needs. Um, it, can, it can occur as a result of industrial exposure or air or water pollution, medicines, you don't know how many metals are in medicines. Foods, um, improperly coated food containers. Have you ever noticed the difference between, well, and what about aluminum? You know, aluminum cans. How, how many years have you been drinking out of aluminum cans? Yikes. And I was so disappointed when one of my favorite um, little local companies that was making such wonderful um, kombucha. Oh, I just loved it so much and we get these nice glass growlers and, and I was really just loved their stuff. I don't know for whatever reason they converted and they changed to where they packaged it all in aluminum cans and I stopped buying it because I'm not going to purposely drink out of an aluminum can. If I can avoid it. I've done it for a lot of years and I'm not going to do that anymore. So, um, lead-based paints. Those of you that work around that kind of stuff, you know, you're exposed to chemicals, especially, you know, if, you're, <laughs> if your vocation is a painter. Think about that, you know, you get it all over your hands, you get, you wash your hands in paint thinner sometimes, or if you're spraying it, you're inhaling it, it's falling on your skin so there's a lot of ways to absorb heavy metals and quite easily become toxic so let's talk a little bit about some of the signs and symptoms of toxicity okay um, acute symptoms associated with heavy metals could include things like headaches which is what I was having abdominal pain and cramping nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, fatigue. That was my other thing. And I thought, well, sure, I'm tired. I've been working like 20 hours a day, it seems like. And we've been out here in the heat on the blacktop. And, but I was like, I felt like I was walking through concrete. I was so tired. My body was fatigued, not just tired. Uh, difficulty breathing could be another one. But in more severe cases, uh, you may get like burning and tingling sensations, um, or, or chronic infections, you know, you just get one right after another and you can't seem to get rid of them. Brain fog, <laughs> no, real brain fog, not just, you know, having an off day, but where you just can't seem to connect the dots. It, you're just having a hard time focusing. Um, visual disturbances, insomnia paralysis uh, those are all signs of heavy metal poisoning um, Mandy says that in Nepal they use a lot of recycled glass for their sodas recycled glass bottles for their soda that would be way better than aluminum cans not to mention the fact at least you're not creating more trash but all of those symptoms, you know, they can be attached to lots of other things, but if you are having these fairly regularly, you need to maybe stop and just do a little, um, a little journaling maybe. Just write down your activities for the past few weeks. What have you done on a regular basis? What have you exposed yourself to that, um, you know, it's gardening season. Have you had your hands in all kinds of fertilizers or, um, I know that, you know, I've been shoveling poop and all kinds of stuff, but I haven't really done much with chemicals. I don't, I, I go
grow organically so I don't get exposed to the chemical things but some people do and some people spray their lawns you know with all kinds of chemicals so what have you been doing for in the past few weeks that may have caused you to raise your toxicity level to the point where maybe you're having some of these symptoms now another thing that adds to that is the food you're eating you know there's a lot of people that go what's the difference between organically grown foods and you know the one you know there's not really a lot and why do they charge us more you know I mean we just have this rebellious thing in us that says why should we have to pay more for less but um, a lot of people have a sensitivity to a lot of the things that are sprayed on your vegetables and your fruits and even that the animals ingest for you know people that eat a lot of meat um, you can get if you never were exposed to any other external or environmental toxins you could actually become toxic just from the food you eat so you need to balance it out right now we're in a in the kind of a good place where actually a lot of people are, are growing more of their own stuff and they're paying more attention to their own little nuclear needs which is a good thing as long as you're not spraying the heck out of everything with roundup or some kind of you know ant killer or whatever you need to just you know if you need to know how to get rid of ants naturally give me a call I can let you know I mean it's easy you just apple cider vinegar and cayenne pepper and a little bit of dish soap their history they don't like it you might have to apply it a couple of different you know a couple times if it's a big ant hill. I have ants like you wouldn't believe but I just relocate them with that stuff and I don't deal with chemicals <clears throat> it's the same with poison ivy if you use salt and vinegar and dish soap on poison ivy you can take care of it without having to spray chemical sprays and expose you and your animals and your kids and whoever else to stuff that you don't want to be absorbing in your skin. So let's talk about some foods that you can eat that can help remove heavy metals from your body because that's really more productive, wouldn't you say? I mean, it's good for you to be aware and it's good for you to know, okay, I need to understand that pretty much anything I do at this point could be exposing me to some kind of heavy metal. So it you need to detox on a regular basis and part of that is is easy as just incorporating some of these foods into your body all the time don't just wait until you're feeling crappy but eat these things regularly and the heavy metals that combined with drinking distilled water and I've talked to you about distilled water before and that is um, so important because distilled water is completely empty it's hungry water and it will go through and it will pull it'll pull um, minerals and things that are that are just that haven't been assimilated by your body and they're just lodging in your weak areas it'll pull toxic um, metals it'll pull all kinds of toxins and it'll just pull them right out of your body and it doesn't take the good stuff it just takes the bad stuff and it is your best friend those of you that struggle with arthritis or what you think is arthritis I challenge you to just drink distilled water for about a month and then tell me you don't feel better because I promise you you will that is a claim I will make <clears throat> but here are some other things that you can do and and um, I also have a recipe for you that's in your documents um, but it is a chelation pesto recipe that's really easy to make it takes you like five minutes and then you can put it in little jars and you can freeze it or you can put it in the refrigerator and just keep some on use it you know put it on a baked potato eat it with crackers do whatever um, but eat some of it on a regular basis to get some of these things into your body to start chelating the heavy metals that, you, that you're taking in. So here's a list. Cilantro. 
Cilantro is one of the best heavy metal detoxers. I started putting it in my active immune tonic, even even though it's, you know, doesn't exactly line up with all of the immune boosting things. It starts pulling the heavy metals out of your body, which you, you know, ultimately makes your body healthier and stronger. So it does boost your immune system in that way. Garlic, same thing. We all know the power of garlic, and garlic will chelate heavy metals. It's easy. Garlic, but you know, not garlic powder. Get fresh garlic and use garlic. Wild blueberries. So if you know uh, anywhere around you, or if you take frequent hikes and you find wild blueberries, eat them. Lemon water. So instead of just drinking distilled water, squeeze lemon in it. You've got more bang, you got two for one there. Um, spirulina. For those of you that don't know what spirulina is, it's a green food. It's a super food. It's, it is a form of algae, for lack of a better word. Um, and it is packed with heavy metal detoxers and it's a super food. You could literally live on it if you had to. Chlorella, same thing. Chlorella, you can actually grow chlorella yourself. It's not hard. Um, barley grass juice. So you can buy barley grass powder. Make sure you get organic. Um, and then just, um, you know, put it in your smoothie or put it in your juice in the morning or drop it in your lemon water, however you want to get it down you. Um, Atlantic dulse, okay, not Pacific stuff, but dulse is also a seaweed and it is very, very powerful. It's it's also a good one for balancing hormones and stuff, but it is good for chelating heavy metals. Curry, green tea, probiotics. So there's your kombucha again and um, other types of, you know, kimchi, that kind of stuff, fermented foods, are all packed with um, probiotics and those things will also help your body to detox. Um, some of my favorites, Brazil nuts, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, olive oil. All of these things are really, really good and they're, they're good to eat. You can, you know, you can, I think last week, um, Mandy even created a little, um, superfood trail mix. You know, if you were to just add some of these things in with that trail mix and snack on it, give it to your kids, you know, um, just to have a ba a little baggie in the car, um, put it in a bowl on the table as you walk by, grab a handful and you eat it. Just do that favor for your body and give it some chelation, um, some chelating foods to offset all of the other junk that it's got in there that it's trying to get rid of. Now, if you're really seriously toxic, there are ways that you can detox and it, it like very, very heavy detoxing. Um, but it's not, it's not very fun and you really don't need to do that if you are willing to um, stay consistent and do something daily, you're much better off. I will say this though, if you already know on the front end that your liver needs a little attention, I would recommend that you do a liver detox first. I have a good liver detox tea and a liver detox tincture, I would recommend like a three day um, liver cleanse using the teas and eating just like a, a real simple mono diet where when you eat something you eat only that thing like all watermelon for breakfast <laughs> or whatever but just one thing at a time so your liver doesn't have to process you know carbohydrates and proteins and all that stuff all at the same time it's just doing one thing at a time drinking lots of distilled water and drinking the liver detox tea. Those herbs that are in that tea will flush and cleanse your liver. And really, if you, if you do that for three days, your liver will be in pretty good shape. 
um, that will definitely help you with heavy metal removal. And I would do that first, if, especially if you know that your liver's, you know, touchy. Um, as far as um, Tina asks if lime water will work, there's, there's something about lemons that um, actually is more effective. Limes are okay, but lemons are better. Lemons will do you um, m more um, benefit faster. You know, you can squeeze lemon. Can I talk louder? Yes. How's this? Is this any louder? Sorry. I do that. I ramble. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay. Okay, good. Um, so I would, I would stick with lemon water for a while. Like I said, limes are okay, but limes are not lemons. And so they have a little bit different chemical makeup and they react differently with your alkaline, with your pH. And you would just be better off with lemons. That's all I'm gonna say on that. Do what you want. I am not the boss of you, but I would do lemons. Um, <laughs> okay, so grab some chelating foods. And okay, with all the hand washing we're doing these days, I'm gonna recommend that you pay close attention to what you're using to wash your hands with. Okay, don't just get the 99 cent stuff in the big jugs at Walmart and um, not read the labels, okay? Because 20 seconds every single time and you're rubbing and you're rubbing and you're putting all that stuff into your skin. Before we know it, we're all gonna be toxic just from um, all of the things that we're absorbing through our skin. Um, yes. Our hands are clean and viruses can't stick to that, but you don't want all of that stuff going in. Um, yes, I would also recommend, Tina asked what about baths with salt. Epsom salt is good. And now, again, it's magnesium, but it is health helpful. I would definitely recommend um, Epsom salt baths as part of your detoxing regimen. I wouldn't do it every day, um, maybe twice a week, and um, give a good soak. Also, um, a hot and cold, you know, anything diaphoretic, drinking ginger tea, drinking things that make you sweat, cinnamon, and um, Tulsi tea. That stuff makes me sweat like crazy. and just some of those kinds of teas that you know are diaphoretic those of you that have taken my classes just look through your manual and look through those herbs that are diaphoretic and you know um, drink some of those as tea um, even if you make it as iced tea you'll still get the benefit of the diaphoretic herbs use lots of garlic and if you want to if you are really trying to pull some heavy metals out I talked to you once before about a garlic paste for your feet. I also told you make sure that it's mixed with olive oil so that you don't burn the skin off your feet like I did. But um, crush some garlic, mix it with some olive oil, rub it onto the bottoms of your feet, and then put some nice clean white socks on and sleep with it on your feet. You will taste the garlic in the morning but it is one of the best for cleansing. Um, so, it, you know, if you're alone <laughs> and you want to do that, that's great. You know, unless, you're, unless your partner doesn't mind or they're doing it too. So, but um, that is a good way to pull. And it's also a good way to pump antibiotic into your body if you are needing to fight an infection or anything like that. Garlic is wonderful. So, any questions? You guys have asked me some good ones so far. Hi, Greta. Okay, I wanna to talk to you just a little bit. Now, on the paperwork that I uploaded for you, I'm serious, there, is, there are pages and pages. What I did was I found, I went through some of the most, oh, you can't really see this, 
but the most um, common or the ones that I think that you guys would maybe most likely be exposed to, like arsenic or cadmium or you know mercury or copper even, um, lead poisoning, and it and it it's a very extensive. Um, how you can get them, well, just like for instance, um, overexposure to silver may cause a gray discoloration on the skin, hair, and internal organs. Additional symptoms may include nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. So, you know, some people, I know, uh, you know, um, people that work with and uh, make silver jewelry, um, you need to be careful. You need to, at some point, either pace yourself, if that's something you can do, or maybe wear gloves so that you're not absorbing all that silver into your body all the time because your hair will fall out I mean you'll you'll end up with some serious symptoms if you're not careful and if you're not detoxing along the way you can balance it out our bodies are amazing they can do anything just about I mean they are amazing but you you can overload your body and then it just kind of goes I can't do anything else until you get rid of something so and nobody's a really big fan of detoxing, I know that, but you need to somehow make it work for you. And that's why my offering you different types of foods that you can eat that can chelate and they'll be working, you know, throughout the day. It's probably one of the easiest ways. Um, and like I said, drink diaphoretic teas, drink distilled water. These are all things that you can do that will be fairly simple and you can incorporate into whatever budget you already have and um, also have your children involved with that too eating those types of things too so that they don't ever get a buildup in their bodies you know the longer we live the more stuff builds up and that's why you know <laughs> that's why they talk about all of these old age diseases well they're not really old age diseases it just takes that long for our bodies to finally give up the ghost and say we can't go farther until you do something so we get new cells all the time so if we can keep our bodies on the right path and we can be um, cleaning and refreshing and renewing uh, there's no reason for us to ever have issues like heavy metal poisoning but I know that a lot of people do and what we take for granted as just symptoms of life like headaches and stomach aches or you know uh, maybe itchy skin or you know your hair falling out when it never does that or something like that or your eyes not working right or it's like you know for like five days now I haven't been able to concentrate so these are all things that now you know could be a sign of heavy metal poisoning and it's fixable but you need to put the brakes on you need to go back through you need to examine what you've been doing for the past few weeks and write stuff down and then go back through take a look at you know i've i've there's a bunch i've got a whole bunch of metals listed in here and what their symptoms are and uh, what could be what could cause them and and do some homework do a little research on yourself and then correct it but the easiest way to correct it is with food and drink that's one of the easiest ways because your body knows how to heal it knows how to take care of itself if you will just give it some tools I say that all the time and I mean it without having to go and have IVs and you know different things put in who wants that nobody wants that so that's what I'm going to recommend that you do. Um, and you know, there's a lot of, um, also there's a lot of heavy metals in like new cars and actually new furniture, new stuff, period. It is, it's treated and sprayed with different things. And so you, you just have to really start to take a look at your American lifestyle and think about, okay, how many airplanes have I been on? <laughs> In the last you know three months do I I probably need to detox just because I have been around you know so many I mean think about it every place you go especially right now ha is being I mean you can't push a shopping cart that hasn't been sprayed down with bleach 
and you know that's fine but that stuff makes me cough and it, it's very ironic you know I go in to the store and this cart has been sprayed down with bleach and there's a bleach in the air and I'm like choking and everybody's looking at me and it's like no it's the bleach I, I I'm breathing bleach so <clears throat> sometimes you know the cure is a little hard to take so recognizing that you are um, exposed now more than ever to a lot of things that you may not normally be exposed to take a few minutes evaluate and then take some measures to start to chelate and cleanse your body of heavy metals it's easy if you just your food your water and then the herbs that I recommend it um, and then don't forget to take good care of your liver and make sure that that's in good shape because that's your filtering organ all of it goes through your liver so even when you, you know even though your body's trying to flush and detox and get rid of stuff your liver can only go so fast so you need to keep it in good shape keep it clean keep it healthy okay on the last page of your stuff I gave you a recipe and it is a heavy metal chelation recipe. It's really good. Can you guys hear me okay? And it uses garlic, Brazil nuts, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, cilantro, flaxseed oil, lemon juice, powdered dulse, which is a seaweed, and a little bit of sea salt. So, while you're out and about, see if you can round up those things. Maybe, I don't know about Brazil nuts around here. I'm not sure. I think Trader Joe's might be your best bet for something like that. I don't know. But, um, or I don't know if you can get stuff like that at the farmer's market right now. I'm not sure. But those that's what you need. And then you are just literally going to um, process it in a food processor or whatever. Store it in glass jars. It freezes. So do enough to to make yourself a you know a couple jars a month worth or you know whatever I those little jelly jars you know a little goes a long way so you could if you have you know just two of you in your family or whatever or, you know just a small jar it'll probably last you a month and or maybe not I don't know it's really good you might just eat it with a spoon I don't I'm not sure but make enough so you don't have to go through it you know every month or whatever make yourself enough of it and then put it in the refrigerator or the freezer and pull that stuff out and eat it regularly chase it with some good lemon distilled water and give your body some love and that the the heavy metals will go but you have to stay consistent it's like anything else natural and herbal it's not going to happen overnight so you need to get started and you need to stay with it it needs to become a part of your lifestyle instead of grabbing for peanuts get yourself pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds um i love the pesto like on pasta or baked potatoes uh i would suggest if you wanted to turn this into a cleanse i would suggest a combination of eating the pesto at least three times a day and li the liver detox tea and the water the distilled water and I would really limit your diet to a mono diet uh, whole foods nothing processed not even mixtures of things just whole foods and do that for three weeks and if you could do that for three weeks your body would be pretty clean you'll feel so much better your breath will change your and you can you can um, also you know augment that with the Epsom salt baths and um, you know the hot and cold packs washing another thing too is, is especially if you're doing a lot of diaphoretics you will sweat so you want to don't let that absorb right back into your skin if you're not at a point where you can take a shower or whatever you need to um, get some clean cloths or even 
paper towels, you know, something you can throw away and just rinse your body down with apple cider vinegar or uh, baking soda water, something that, you know, you can, where you can clean your pores out so that whatever you're sweating out doesn't get, just end up going right back in. And you will be amazed and you will feel so much better and your body will love you for it. So that's your challenge. And I'm here for you if you guys have any questions or if you need anything from me. Um, also, I wanted to let you know that those of you that are local, uh, I am um, taking orders online for um, herbal products you know, through my website. And then um, I have an option on there that says local pickup. So if you are local and you want to pick up on Saturday mornings at the uh, Hot Springs Farmers Market between 930 and 1045. I'm not camping out there all day um, You can choose that option and pay online and then I will just deliver I'll be in the parking lot and I will just have your items there to bring to you the website is www.crookedhouseherbals.com And you're welcome to utilize that service if that's something that you want to do let me see, what else do we have here? Christy says, what are the side effects on detoxing stomach and intestinal? Uh, actually, um, you might experience something more with uh, the liver aspects, like if you're doing the liver detox first, you'll probably feel more with that, and that actually could be anything from just kind of feeling kind of puny to sick to your stomach a day it doesn't usually last longer in the day um, m maybe just uh, when you plan to do that the liver portion just do it at a time when you know you can just be home <laughs> no pun intended and um, resting you know where you're not out digging ditches or uh, doing the milk run whatever it is that you do um, but just give yourself those three days with the liver cleanse to to let things ebb and flow because you'll have times when you feel actually really good and then you know you'll get another uh, um, surge of toxins going through your liver and sometimes it will make you not feel so well but just ride it ride that wave it's worth it it's totally worth it uh, Greta will detox help dissolve gallstones and sludge Yes, and I can take it one step further for you. There is my favorite gallbladder cleanse in the world is Holda Clark's. You can Google it or you can find it on my website. It's Holda Clark, H-U-L-D-A-C-L-A-R-K, and it's her liver gallbladder cleanse. It's super easy. It's like a 24-hour gig and then you're done. So it doesn't drag out. Um, it involves grapefruit and Epsom salts and olive oil. And that will empty your gallbladder of sludge and gallstones. I love doing that cleanse. I feel so good. I can't believe how good I feel when I do that, that cleanse. So it is on my site and, it, and you can Google it too. Just Google Holda Clark's um, liver gallbladder cleanse and and sign up because that is so good and it's easy like I said it's grapefruit and olive oil and Epsom salts all things you can easily get most days and I um, I love you guys and I appreciate you showing up to meet with me on Thursdays I really am happy to do this and I would love to continue so I will I will as long as you guys show up to be here with me I want to show you this though this is so great this is today's picture and let me get it hang on let me see if I can if I turn this off can you see it better if I turn this light off not really okay this time around you're gonna have to just download this puppy and print it out this is a hidden pictures review and she has oh my gosh it is so cute listen if any of you guys want to take a look at some of Mandy's uh, Amanda Pascal no 
Yeah. Amanda Pascal illustration. I think or it's a yeah, Amanda Pascal illustration .com. I hope I got that right. But she is amazing and she's got fantastic stuff on her site. And she is she's um commissioned to do a lot of things. She she illustrates children's books and she does a lot of um commission work. And I'm so blessed because she's my daughter-in-law and I get this kind of stuff just because she loves me. But look at this picture. Isn't it adorable? She said it's me and my dog Andy. But in this picture are 17 things that we have talked about already in our Facebook live meetings. And you, this you'll find them in this picture. It's a hidden pictures thing, you know, like we used to do when we were kids. And so download this one. You may want to, you may want to print out two, one for your child and one for you on this one. It's too cute to pass up. And I thank you again, Mandy, for this because it's, I love it. Um, okay. We're going to sign off for this week and I hope you guys, um, have a healthy and wonderful week detox your bodies and let's do this.